it's good to have you here and I'm grateful for your time. Thank you. The good news is you have a lot of great projects to talk about. You have a new TV show. I know you're shooting a movie right now. Yes. You, in fact, took a day off to be here and talk to us yes. today. Yes, I'm shooting Stuber um, for Fox, 20th Century Fox, with Camille Nanjani and Dave Bautista, and it's hilarious and fun and wonderful. And I'm here today to talk about Condor, which is going to be on the Audience Network premiering tonight. Um, so, yeah, things are going really, really well. There's lots to talk about, and, and I want to talk more about Condor in a moment because I think people are going to be excited about what you're working on. But, you know, not your fault, but you found yourself um, the subject of advances by Harvey Weinstein, the subject of retaliation by Harvey Weinstein, according to Peter Jackson, and um, your own experience. And I just wonder how you feel in this moment. I mean, he just was indicted by a grand jury. He's been walked into a police station, perp walked, mug shot, facing criminal charges. How does that feel after everything you've been through? Uh, it feels like a really good first step. You know, um, it's it's him finally facing real, real criminal consequences for his criminal behavior. And so for that, I feel gratified. But honestly, last weekend was a very emotional one. And I cried many times because just seeing him brings up a lot of bad feelings. And um, he's raped many people that I love. Um, so it's not really a happy occasion. I think maybe there will be some celebration when he gets convicted and goes to jail. That's when the process will be complete and we, we will see justice really being served. But until then, this is a great first step. There are an array of allegations against him. I think that last count, 95, 96, 97 women who've made varying levels of claims against him. And this was the secret that you held for a long, long time. You know, a lot I, of courage to speak out. The funny thing is, it, at the time it happened, I told everyone I knew. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will tell you that. Mm -hmm. um, all these people wrote to me online. I remember you telling me about that, Quentin Tarantino. Um, uh, corroborated that I told him about it right away that September. Um, he said it in the New York Times article. So I told everyone I knew. No one said, hey, this is sexual harassment. You should, you should go to the authorities. You have a case. You should go to the police. Maybe it's assault. No one said anything like that. Everyone was just kind of comforting about it. And I didn't really understand the law. And I didn't I didn't think I was important enough to make a big deal over, so I just kind of tried to put it to the side and keep working and, and go on about my life. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people felt that way, and none of us compared notes. I only knew of one Were you one shocked other when you person. saw how many people? I could not believe it. Uh, I could not believe how many people. And if we had known about each other then, there would have been, oh, boy. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm sorry. It's overwhelming when you yeah. see it. Um, I think we, we would have found strength in numbers and we would have done something a lot sooner. But I only knew of one other person, Sophie Dix, um, who told me her story a little while after mine did, uh, mine occurred. But, um, but I did try and do something about it at the time. I even spoke to somebody at Miramax about it and nothing happened. So it kind of went away and I tried to go on with my life. You did try to go on with your life, and you were a rising star. I told you before we sat on, I was a huge, huge fan of yours. I loved Mighty Aphrodite. You won the Oscar. And then to you, it felt like your career kind of stalled. Peter Jackson, who, of course, was the influential director of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, came out and said it, that he had heard from Miramax, oh, don't work with Mira Servino. It's so rare to actually have living proof from someone of something that you suspected for so long. What that, did you think when you read that and how do you, you feel know, I now? didn't even know what I suspected. I just knew that my career had kind of slumped and I thought, well, maybe it's my fault. Maybe I've had too many children. I've been pregnant too many times. And, you know, sometimes you have bad luck. And I was like, OK, you know, maybe it wasn't meant to be that my career was going to continue at the same level that it had been. But that morning to wake up and see Peter Jackson's tweet, that he had blacklisted myself and Ashley Judd based on Harvey's, um, you know, telling him not to work with us. And then Terry Zweigoff the next day came out and said the same thing about Bad Santa. It was like a thunderbolt. It was kind of crazy. I was like, oh, so it was really this malevolent hand that changed the course of my life and my professional horizons. And look, I still have worked all these years, and I've done great projects. Some of them have been lower profile, but I'm proud of all of them. 
I have the most amazing family in the world. I have four most beautiful, wonderful children and the most incredible husband who's starting his own series, by the way, this week for a major cable network that I can't talk about yet because it's not publicized, <laughs> but, but he's a lead on this new show. So everything is going great for us now. And we probably wouldn't have met if I'd done Lord of the Rings. And I wouldn't have had my four beautiful children. So at the end of the day, I, I am fine with everything. But to know that this was done to me rather than it just being fate was kind of, um, kind of world rocking at the time. Yeah. Um, but you know, right now I'm really excited to be a part of this movement of Me Too and Time's Up and I'm working on promoting legislation in California uh, for uh, bills that are among the strongest anti-sexual harassment legislation in the nation. Uh, there's a hashtag, take the lead, if you want to find out more about them. They're about statute of limitation, about training workers in every organization that works in the state of California, about defining who can be a sexual harasser, not just your immediate boss, but all these other people that you have business relationships. In my business, that would be like a director, a producer, a casting director, an investor, because a lot of times investors go with this quid pro quo thing with female and male, you know, prospects and say, listen, I'll, I'll give you money for your project or your movie or your business if you, if you play ball with me, if you have a sexual relationship with me. And that is just horrendous. But that's been the way it has been in this field, in every field and in power forever. Men have raped and abused and harassed people weaker than them, people in position subordinate to them, and I'm not just talking women, I'm talking men, I'm talking children, I'm talking trans people, non-binary people, LGBTQ people, forever. Rape has been with us forever. And if we're at the cusp of this moment where all of this action, all of this legislation, but also this culture changing, where we're working with children, we're working with high school students, we're working with men to change the idea of what being a strong man is and how to not do this to people and for women and boys and girls to know their rights, then all of this will have been worth it in some crazy way. If, if culture is going to change and less people will be sexually assaulted because of this movement and this outcry among millions across the world, then it was all worth it. Well, Mira, you have, um, you have said it so eloquently, and you are a voice in this movement now, and I know it's not easy. I appreciate you talking about it, and I, I, we're kind of out of time, but I do want to talk about your project. Yes, because Condor. It's Condor opening premieres tonight, tonight. So on just, Audience Network. Just tell us what, what it's about. It's based on Three Days of the Condor, of uh, the you know Redford movie from the 70s, the iconic Sidney Pollack movie, but it's really a new iteration of it, and it's very topical. It's all about how people, individuals in the intelligence agencies are really manipulating world events at like an unbelievable, deadly scale. And uh, this one man, Joe Turner, played by Max Irons, uh, who's Jeremy Irons' son, actually an amazing young actor, is the man on the run being hunted. I, um, they, I and a bunch of other people think that he's guilty of this group murder of 11 of his co-workers. And I am going toe-to-toe -to -toe with William Hurt, my ex-lover and, and boss, former boss. Sounds good. It's, 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 it's really a great, gripping, um, incredible thriller, nail-biter, cliffhanger. No one is safe. So every episode, you'll lose a character that you love. So everybody's on the chopping block, so you never know what's going to happen. But it's really, really pertinent to today's world. And all the cast is uniformly incredible. Um, Sold. Yes. And then <laughs> Frazier is amazing. I was going to say, you Bob have so, bands, yeah, so huge, people, an incredible Moses. cast. Yeah, really amazing. And you at the top of that list. Mira awesome. Sorvino, thank you. thank you for being here. Thanks for your candor. Thank you. Thanks for talking about all of it. Thank Appreciate you so it. much. Thank you.